Hi there. Thank you for stopping by the YouTube channel for the First United Methodist Church of Orange. I am Pastor Bill Johnson, and this is the Saturday edition of We Are the Church. Well, a good Saturday to you, friends. Today, I'm going to be reading from the 24th chapter of Matthew, and uh, this is part of an apocalyptic discourse. I'll be reading from verses 22 through 27. Jesus is reassuring his disciples that in the end, God is going to uh, bring a final judgment upon the world, and it's going to be uh, a time when Christ will reign in the fullness of glory. He's saying this just before he is to be betrayed and, and, and arrested. And it's a, a word of assurance uh, given to the disciples, but also to all of us. I, uh, I'll be starting in verse 22. Uh, Jesus has been talking about some of the things that will happen. The holy places will be uh, desecrated. Um, there's gonna be hardship and, um, and turmoil. And he says, uh, beginning in verse 22, if those days had not been cut short, no one would be saved, but for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. And then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and produce great signs and omens to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Take note, I am telling you this beforehand, so if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. And if they say, look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. We're never sure exactly what to make of apocalyptic literature uh, in our New Testament. It, pick up, it picks up echoes of uh, the prophetic writings uh, of the Old Testament. And it is certainly very stark and very vivid and in some cases very dark in its tone. But all of it is to say that the stuff that we experience in this world can never last forever. And in fact, the world itself, being a creature of time, cannot enter eternity without letting go of that timeliness, without there being an end to the times, if you will. So, uh, Jesus is simply wanting to reassure the church, his disciples, his friends, and all the church, that when the time comes for all the world to wind itself down, the powers and the rulers of this world are not gonna go easily. They're not gonna give up their uh, desire to be like God very easily but they will need to give it up. And those who believe, those who are in uh, relationship with God, those who have faith, are also going to make it through it's by the power of God and by the mercy of God. Now, in the United Methodist Church, we have uh, one principal norm or source of our authority, and that is the scriptures. But 2,000 years after the time of Christ, we are aware that... Um, these scriptures are not read in a vacuum. And the contemporary issues that we face today are not always explicitly spelled out in the Bible. And some of the things that concern the writers of the Bible no longer are concerns to us today. That is the context in which we live has changed dramatically. So how are we to know, how are we to have the authority to make decisions that are faithful decisions in this world? Well, we uh, understand in the United Methodist Church that we read these scriptures through the lenses of three other important uh, gifts from God. We have the ability to be reasonable. And we have the traditions of the elders and of the church, which for thousands of years have informed people on the best practices that can lead us to a relationship with God. And then finally, those best practices do lead us into relationship with God. And so we have our own experience of God. Scripture supported by reason, tradition, and experience. These are the norms or the sources of our authority. 
as we live in the world. And friends, these are not just for pastors or for leaders in the church or for would-be messiahs. Jesus expected that every single believer would do their utmost, their utmost, with scripture, tradition, reason, and experience guiding them to work through what it means to be saved by God, to empower that salvation, to give energy to the salvation that we have received from God. It is the responsible uh, responsibility, I should say, of every United Methodist to um, theologically uh, position themselves in a way so that they will know what is of God and what is false. And by the way, when the world finally is winding itself down, it will be as obvious to someone, to us, as someone who's standing in the West and watching the lightning flash and come in from the East. You'll know, you will know, because you are of God and because the Spirit is with you. So I wanna lift up to you and remind you that uh, you can test any big questions of faith you have through scripture and reason and tradition and experience. These are our sources of authority as United Methodists and you can do it. So let's be in prayer. Loving God, we thank you that you do not leave us alone, that you have given us the tools, the resources, the grace and the gifts that we need to know when you are moving, how you are moving, and to understand the ways that we need to go to be faithful in this world. And so, O oh Lord, we ask that you empower each and every one of us. And when we gather, we work together to test the spirits to see whether they are of you. We ask that you guide us in all holiness and righteousness. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Friends, thanks for stopping in on this Saturday. I have a couple of meetings scheduled today and maybe you have a lot of work to do. But I want to remind you that as you're going about your work today, our three simple rules are do no harm, do all the good you can, stay in love with God, and I will see you soon.